Hey guys, welcome to part two of the demo uh, for rendering the fire hydrant in our final section. Um, before we get into the actual render and what it looks like from part one, uh, I thought I'd show you guys what we're going to be doing uh, to actually composite this in the node editor. Um, there's a couple of ways you can go about compositing in the node editor. If you uh, go under the post processing here and click compositing um, and make sure that's checked off, when you actually render and then you go to the compositor, you can actually use the render that Blender uh, generated if you hit this render button. But uh, for several reasons, that may not be what you need, especially if you're going to render out an animation. In our case, I wanted to show you guys how to uh, use an external file to render from, even though we're only using one frame, uh, because it's going to be a practice you're going to want to get into when you have much larger projects. And uh, so basically what you're going to do to set that up is um, you're going to go ahead and come down here and um, instead of going in and hitting the render button at the top here, you're going to be hitting the animation button. And the only thing you really have to be aware of here is your, uh, your frame range needs to be um, at one frame if you're going to be rendering a still image. Uh, so this is usually set to 250. Uh, I changed this to zero and zero because we're on the, z uh, the zero frame for rendering this, uh, this scene. That's our, our camera view. And um, basically just went through and made sure my settings for the output down here uh, were set to the directory that I wanted for uh, the, uh, the still frame that it outputs and made sure that, uh, very important, I went down here to the file type and selected open EXR multi-layer. And that's gonna allow you to save all your render passes into an external file. So that's about all you need to do. Then you just hit the animation button, let it render and uh, hopefully you'll end up with a nice little render. So let's take a look at what we got. This is a 4K image, so it's very large. Um, so if I hit one on the keyboard to go full frame, uh, this is a one to one ratio. So this is how big the image actually is. And as I uh, kind of scroll around, you guys can see all the details in the image uh, that we got. And uh, it doesn't look half bad uh, right out of the can, but uh, we can definitely make some improvements. And uh, so let's get to it. Um, we, uh, we first need to assess kind of where we're at and what we're gonna be doing with the scene. So uh, I like the colors. I wanna make it a little bit more of a dusky uh, blue color. So um, let's get into tweaking some of the objects in the scene and then the overall color. I'm not gonna do a whole lot in the node editor um, compositing wise because this is a, still a beginner, beginner course. Um, but I will show you guys how to do some basic uh, things like depth of field and some, uh, some color correction using the nodes that we haven't gone over before. And then we'll jump into Photoshop. So I want to show you first uh, the two ways you can composite with a node editor. Typically, you're going to start off with your render layers input here. And uh, you're going to select whatever render layer you want to use. And then it's going to have all of your, uh, your passes here. And uh, if you're compositing with the internal um, render that Blender did, you're going to need a viewer node that will allow you to turn on this backdrop option that uh, will show you this down here. And then to pass it back out of the, the node editor, you're going to need this composite node uh, that you're going to composite your final image into. Uh, but that's just for the, uh, the internal rendering engine. Uh, if you export an external file using the animation button, all you need to do is uh, create an image node for your input, uh, find the, uh, the render, the EXR in this case that we rendered out, open that up and then switch this uh, to the render layer that you want to use down here instead of image. And uh, it'll look exactly the same as it does internally. Um, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to set up um, our passes and get them ready to use. So uh, let's very quickly get into that. Combined, we don't need to change anything. We're gonna leave that the way it is and mess with the colors on their own. Depth is gonna be something where we're gonna wanna tweak uh, some of the range of how that works. So the simplest way to do that is to come in here to vector. Um, and I found, I use normalize to kind of compress the values down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add another, um, let's do, Let's do RGB curves. I think it'll be the fastest way to kind of get the results we're after. So I'm going to bring this in 
here. And then I'm going to duplicate this viewer so we have another viewer. Connect this up. And now you can see this depth pass. So if I hit M on these to turn these off, this is what you get right out of the can. If I turn these back on, it's going to compress that down. And then you can crush this even further with the black to pull back those, those external uh, values in the distance. Um, so that's kind of how we'll set that up. And um, go ahead and collapse that. Then what we're going to do for the object index pass is uh, we're going to look for a node in here. Uh, let's see if we can find it. ID mask. That's what we're going to want. So we're going to set this to the ID value. And then we're going to duplicate this viewer again and then pull this over. And that's going to give us um, whatever index this is on. It correlates to the object ID pass we set up before we rendered. And it's going to isolate each of the objects we assign a number to. So that's all there is to that. And so let's get into how we can actually use these passes to uh, start some color correction. All right, guys, let's start with the ID mask and uh, let's isolate the fire hydrant. I think that's number seven. Okay. So um, we're basically going to duplicate the ID mask and we're going to try to isolate this fire hydrant out of the scene. So to do that, I'm going to want to make sure I reconnect this object pass into the ID mask. And um, we're going to go ahead and add a, um, let's do an RGB curves. And then let's connect this into the viewer, pull this into image here. So now uh, we've got the image connected to this RGB curves. And as you can see, if we tweak this, it's going to affect everything. So what we need to do is plug this into factor and it's just going to affect the fire hydrant now because we used a mask. Um, so what we can do is we can brighten it up a little bit like we have here, crank up some of the red, a little bit more saturated, take some of the green out, add some blue, see what that looks like. It's going to go a little more purple on us, pulling that out, it's going to go really red, like a fire engine red. So if we want it to stand out, we can pull that out and uh, kind of give us a contrast curve if we do this. So not bad. And uh, so that's how you can tweak uh, using the ID masks. So we're going to use that for the fire hydrant. And uh, we don't need the viewer anymore because we've already uh, finished that composite. Now uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to set up the depth of field. So we've got our depth set up here. And uh, what we're going to use for this is a defocus node. So I think we're going to want to go here, defocus, and pull that in. Okay, so we're going to put this into the image value. We're going to put our Z pass composite into that and this back into the viewer. And uh, if we have this set up, uh, we can tweak these values to kind of give us some different effects. So. If we bring this up and we bring this back, you're going to start seeing some blur happening in the background here. And I don't know if you can see that, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what that's looking like. But the, the way we affect the blur is we, we tweak what these values look like. So to show you what that looks like on the map, I'm just going to bring this back over to this viewer node and kind of show you what's going on. Um, as you move these values around for what is uh, in focus and what isn't, you're going to be tweaking these white and black values. Um, you just want to get a range that you feel comfortable with for that. And then when you pass that through, you're going to get a nice little depth of field effect going in there. And to kind of uh, boost that and amplify what that looks like, you can turn up the Z scale here. If you crank this up, something like three, you're going to get a really shallow depth of field effect. 
So as you guys can see, the foreground here is in focus, background is completely blurred out. And uh, if you like that, then um, definitely use it. So uh, that's about all there is for the depth of field. Now let's do an overall color correction um, to wrap this up before we jump into Photoshop. And uh, I'll show you guys how to uh, combine these together. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our basic depth of field set up, but we don't have the, uh, the original fire hydrant tweak in there. Um, so what we're gonna need to do is figure out how to combine these. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is pass the results of your color correction for the fire hydrant into this image value instead of the original image. If you do that, then your fire hydrant correction will come back into this and it will keep your blur with it when you pass it into the viewer node. So uh, anything you add after this now, before it gets to the viewer, will be added on top of everything else here. So let's zoom back out. And then let's do one last color correction for the entire shot. And then let's go to color balance. So um, I'm gonna pull these over a little bit and let's drop this into the middle and uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, these, uh, these are basically gonna equate to your darks, your medium tones, and your light tones. So uh, first thing I usually do is come in here and I correct for the darks. If you hold shift, um, you can gradually kind of go through these and tweak the way they look until you're happy. If you just left click and drag, it's gonna get a little, uh, little crazy on you. So it's good for the darks, for the mids. Let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit. And then for the brights, let's go, let's go up high. Okay, not bad. Come down a little bit. Okay, it's good there. So um, then I'm gonna start with uh, kind of the midtones. I'm gonna go a direction and uh, let's go a little blue. See what that's doing. The shadows, I wanna go kind of a deeper blue. That's a lot. So let's pull that back. Okay, so you get this nice little moonlit cast here, kind of a nighttime shot. It's a little, little much, so I'm gonna bring that in. You don't need a lot, and a little bit goes a long way here. And then uh, for the lights, I'm gonna go warm. So I'm gonna pull that back this way. And let's pull it some more. And I'm liking that. Let's try this, see what we get. Okay. So. There we go. Kind of interesting. All right, so that's good for the color balance. And um, let's go ahead and let's do hue saturation. Pull that in here. I'm gonna pull this down just a tad. It's a little, uh, little heavy on the saturation. Not much, just a little bit. So uh, that's pretty good. Um, I may want to shift the hue a little bit overall. Uh, kind of give the whole image a bit of a, a shift to one direction or the other. Just depends on what you want to do. Going to the right, it's going to warm everything up. Going to the left, it's going to cool everything down a little bit. Go a little more purple. Um, so kind of just depends on what you want. And again, all this can be done in Photoshop. Um, but I wanted to show you guys some of the advanced things you can do with the compositor here. And uh, compositor really can do everything. You don't have to go into Photoshop if you don't want to. Uh, it is a little bit more advanced using the compositor, so it's got a bigger learning curve. But uh, basically that's it. So if we move these out of the way, um, you guys can see now that is, uh, that is our, uh, our final composite. So uh, we're us jump into Photoshop a little bit, clean up some of the stuff, uh, do a little bit of a paint over. Um, I'm gonna speed that up for you guys and uh, that'll wrap it for this lesson and this course.
Okay guys, we're, uh, we're in Photoshop now and uh, we're going to finish this up by doing a bit of a paint over. As you can see, I'm still doing some small color adjustments, but what I'm really trying to do is uh, figure out where I want to go in and add some more uh, contrast and some more shading. Uh, so we're starting down here kind of with the, uh, the, the ground and I kind of by accident went in and textured a little bit overboard on the left hand side with uh, with some of the asphalt texture onto the sidewalk and I kind of like the way it spilled over so I tried to mirror that on the right side and um, now I'm basically just going throughout the scene and trying to add in some details in the dark areas where we didn't get a lot of contrast um, I didn't really like the way the metal texture on that sign looked and I didn't like the darkness on the sandwich sign so I'm just trying to bump some of that up add in some more gradation some shadows, some spill light, things like that. Um, it's important to remember that once you get done with a render, very rarely is it ever 100% finished, just out of the can. You're gonna need to go in and do some manual tweaks, and I found the best way to do that uh, for my workflows has been to jump into photo editing software, such as Photoshop, and uh, sort of uh, do it by hand that way. You can stick with the Node Compositor if you feel more comfortable that way, or if you wanna learn how to use the Node Compositor uh, more thoroughly, but um, I think uh, for most people, this is a standard way of working, and it's a great way to add in some some details in really specific areas. Um, so it's really just a question of what do you think will add some life to the scene. And so um, to finish this up, I basically went through with just a layer with a, a white chalky brush, and did a basic paint over of things I wanted to add to the scene, and I'm using that as a, an underlay for a guide to, uh, to add the details into those areas. So a couple of strands of grass and making sure to, to light those according to uh, the surrounding lights in the environment. Some of those are gonna get backlit, some of those are gonna be almost completely in silhouette. Uh, it just depends on kind of the mood you're going for and where they're at. And um, down on the ground, we've added a coin sitting on that grate, uh, that weather drain at the bottom, and uh, also cigarette butts and a bottle on the side. Typical things you'd probably find in a street uh, gutter. So um, just kind of painting those in. And again, this is, went really quick. Uh, I spent, I don't know, maybe an hour doing the whole thing, but uh, again, that was, uh, kind of trying to make up my mind as I went, what I wanted to add, what I didn't like, and kind of fixing it as I went. Uh, if you were just going to do some basic uh, paint-ins, it, it shouldn't take that long at all. And um, really, you know, once you get in here, uh, depending on the level of detail, uh, it's, it's all about just kind of blocking in the overall color values and matching that to the scene. You'll see me uh, kind of paint in some values to get them relatively uh, where they should be in the local color space and then I'll make a selection of the entire object that I painted and darken it down or brighten it to match the overall ambient light of the scene. And um, that's kind of the process, you know, just come in here in separate layers, um, add in objects, tweak the overall uh, placement of the scene and um, give your scene some more realistic life. Um, this is a great example of an area where I wanted to go in and kind of add like an, a newspaper or some kind of scrap of paper over in the corner just to kind of give some uh, a bit of dirt or some some trash over there and uh, I didn't really like where it was going so I got this far into it and then I just decided um, I didn't really like the way that the shapes were coming together so I ended up painting most of it away and then made a whole new shape and painted it in some light and shadow and that was about it. You can see that I didn't have to block in a lot of detail to get what I needed. Um, and the great thing is, it, it all depends on your output format. If you're going to go to uh, prints and you needed something really high res, you need to focus more on the details and uh, how that's going to look in the shot. But if you're just going to keep this as a digital output um, and you start off with a 4K render, odds are it's not going to stay 4K uh, for a still. So if this is going to end up being quite a bit smaller, then you're not going to notice all those details and you don't need to worry about it. Um, so basically just adding a vignette, adding some basic glow to the overall image, some final color tweaks, and we're done.